Britain has some of the most congested roads in Europe. And as the emergency service is on two wheels, they can slide through the traffic and get vital help where it's most needed, fast. All right, pain coming back? Yeah. All right, okay, oh. get you on the bed. I don't know what's happening to you. Do you know? What do you mean? We're on the front line with Wiltshire Police and West Midlands Ambulance Service as they protect the public and save lives. Coming up, there's been a stabbing in Birmingham. Is it just the one blow you felt to your body? Yeah. A cyclist is injured after a collision with a car. Have you got pain anywhere else at all? Yeah, I'm getting worse. The pain in your arm's getting worse. And we meet the off-road bike cops. Birmingham, early afternoon. A 999 call is coming in. On duty, biker paramedic Mark Hayes. We've got reports of a female in the street being stabbed. <laughs> On his Yamaha FJR 1300, Mark can cut through the traffic faster than a traditional ambulance. The bikes carry all the same equipment as an ambulance and are fitted with our cameras so we arrive at the scene of an incident the second they do. A woman's been attacked in the street two miles away. The biker paramedics can cut through the traffic so fast that they often arrive on scene before any other emergency service. The journey takes Mark just three minutes, and he's there so quickly, he doesn't know if it's safe to approach. We all right to get to scene? Yeah, the officer's there. Two-zero. Yeah, that's received, thank you. Victims being helped by police and bystanders. Okay. Yeah, have a, what's going on? Hello. Are you a medic? I'm a paramedic, yeah. Just sit yourself down a second, my love. Sit yourself down, don't move. Okay, does anybody know what's going on? Uh, can, I, can I just ask, just, just for some shh, because I can't hear the patient. Right. How many blows did you feel to your body? Oh, yeah, the do you want to grab a blanket for us as well, please? Oh, yeah. Right, OK. Is it just the one blow you felt to your body? Yeah. There's one wound that I can see at the moment. Fellow paramedic Steve has arrived as backup. And I need to have a listen to your chest. It's really important, all right? Deep breath in for me. Deep breath in. No, no talking, deep breath. Yeah. OK. So I have a, a pneumothorax on the right side. The pneumothorax is a collapsed lung. If the lung oh, has collapsed, it would mean the stab wound has penetrated the chest. Still sharp scratch, one, two, three. Nice and still, well done. Mark yeah, needs to get her to still. hospital immediately. She's awake now, but if her lungs aren't working so properly, she could collapse at any moment. Go. OK, nice and slowly. Uh, the location of the stab wound, I um, believe it may have punctured a lung, we're not too sure, we need to reassess. Um, so we've got IV access, we're going to alert the hospital and we'll get gone. How do you feel? Tired. Tiredness could be a symptom of lack of oxygen in the blood or a symptom of shock. Um, yeah, um, at the moment, uh, blood pressure's dropping. Uh, obviously, if it was hemorrhage, um, we'd have an increased heart rate. Um, at the moment, if anything, heart rate's uh, dropped. It's on the slow side, uh, and the blood pressure's also dropped. Obviously, it's quite serious at the moment. You all right? What have we got? It's got a bag of fluids. It's got a bag of fluids. The woman's low blood pressure could also be down to shock, or it could be due to the loss of blood. Okay. Mark wants to get fluids into the woman's blood system to replace some of the volume of blood that she's lost. 
With blue lights on and sirens blaring, the ambulance is at the hospital in just a few minutes. Mark hands over to the trauma team. Stabbings, I mean, they can go from one extreme to another. You know, you can have um, a simple stab wound to hand or an arm. You know, the moment we start to see stab wounds in the chest and the back, you, you've got to start thinking on your feet. The old adrenaline starts going. Unfortunately, um, nowadays, stabbings, shootings are a uh, regular occurrence. So you can go out to your first job of the day, which could be an elderly lady fallen. And it can be a nice, simple pleasing job, job satisfaction, um, and then the next thing you could be doing, you could be working on somebody that's been shot or been stabbed, you know. Um, unfortunately, it's a sign of the times and you do get used to it, it's sad to say. Still to come, a crash during rush hour in Birmingham. Have you got pain anywhere else at all? No, I'm okay. getting worse now. And police clamp down on drugs. Do you use cannabis? You might be able to smell a little bit now. Yeah. The streets are beginning to fill with commuters rushing home from work. A 999 call is coming in. Yeah, we see. Thank you. A cyclist and a car have collided in the rush hour traffic. Every year, more than two and a half thousand cyclists are killed or seriously injured on the UK's roads. When Mark arrives, the cyclist is already on his feet, but he's in pain. A police car was just behind the cyclist, and the officers witnessed the incident. Hello. How are we doing? Yeah. All right. Hi. What's happened? Um, yeah, it's my chest shirt at the moment. OK, what happened? Um, I'm going across here. Right um, he came across and banged the sword of him. He's gone like that up the yeah. screen and then... Back up his yeah. Keep nice and still for me a second. Yeah. What's your first name? Uh, Malcolm. Malcolm. Have you got any pain in your neck at all? Uh, no. None at all? No. Any pain in your back? No. No? Nothing no. at all? No. Any pins and needles anywhere? Uh, no. No. Just my arm aching and Okay, knee. pain across your chest. It hurts to talk. Okay. If you take yeah. a deep breath, does it hurt? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Is yeah. there much damage to the car? Um, the Do me a favour then. Um, are you all right to just try and sit on that fence there and we'll have yeah, a proper yeah. look at you? Just take a seat there and I'm going to go and grab some gear. All right. Mark's worried Malcolm's in shock and the adrenaline is masking injuries. He wants to check him over properly. So, Malcolm, other than the pain that you've got in your chest at the moment, have you yeah. got pain anywhere yeah. else at all? Yeah, I'm getting worse. The pain in your arm's getting yeah, worse. Yeah. Yeah. It's painful to move your arm. It's been too painful. It's just, it's just, it's just uh, aching. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's getting worse now. Are you allergic to anything uh, no. apart from cars? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's one of them things. That's all. Okay. So you're coming from which direction? In the crosser, yeah. Yeah. I've been the crosser. Yeah. And then suddenly he was there. Yeah. And you've gone straight into yeah, the yeah. side, up onto yeah. the windscreen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Just relax it. Lovely. That's great. Your oxygen saturation is actually okay, yeah. so that's fine. Yeah. You're a bit cold there, aren't you? Yeah. Right. Well, uh, we'll grab you a blanket. With all high-speed impacts, well, there's a danger just... of internal that's injuries. Yeah, yes, right. Yeah. Mark wants to check there are no irregularities with Malcolm's yeah. heart or lungs. I know. That hurts. Yeah. In. I know. The important thing is um, air entry into your lungs. You yeah, got yeah, perfect air. Yeah. Thank you got good air, air entry bilaterally so that's all good oxygen saturation's good um it's bitterly cold can't examine you properly here so we'll, we'll uh, have an ambulance come we'll examine you on the back of the ambo all okay, right yeah. i'll grab your stuff don't worry about that go on In the ambulance, the team run an ECG to check on Malcolm's heart. Nothing too untoward going on an ECG there, mate. 
Um, for your injuries that you sustained, and obviously because you've, you've been in a bit of a traumatic incident, then uh, we're going to pop you at the hospital anyway. <coughs> Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm going to go. I'll leave you to it, yeah, Malcolm. Yeah. All Thanks the best, mate. Uh, Take care. And because the gentleman's complaining of chest pain, we did a 12 lead ECG. Um, that, that turns out okay. His symptoms are still consistent with, you know, smacking his chest on the side of a car. Um, but what we have to bear in mind is coming downhill on a push bike, he can still gather a bit of speed and the car's pulled straight in front of him. In effect, he's T-boned uh, the car. Obviously, his body's going to stop. Uh, internal organs will carry on moving. Um, so there is potential there for injury. Um, in this occasion, I don't think that's the case. But we're going to get him checked anyway. Early morning, Wiltshire. On patrol, biker cop PC Andy Stanley. PC Stanley parks up to keep an eye on passing traffic. And he's only there for a moment when he spots a car coming the other way with an iced up windscreen. Your vehicle, is it? Yeah. Come here. When I first saw you, yeah. no way on earth could you see out of that screen. All right, OK, no worries, I'll clear it now. Have you got your licence with you? No, I haven't, no. Right. Yeah. Smell cannabis emanating from you? No, not no? really, no. OK, what I'm proposed to do, I'm going to deal with the windscreen. Yeah. You haven't got a proper view ahead. And that's an offence that was caution. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. You'll mention when question something which later on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence, OK? okay. Makes a last minute attempt to clear his windscreen. Right. But it's too little, too late for PC Stanley. He's made good, but obviously he's committed the offence of not having a proper view ahead. And I'll give him the option to take part in the fixed point scheme, or he can have the matter heard in court. I've got a photograph on the PDA which I'll present to the court if need be. Do you have any points in your licence? Yeah. How many have you got? Three. Three. Right, this is going to result in a further three points, but the option to have the matter heard in court if so wish to do so. All right, oh, but I'm proposing okay. to deal with it by way of fixed... It's a fine as well. Yeah, £60. Pounds. I'm proposing to deal with it by way of fixed penny notes on the roadside, all right? <laughs> Same as the speeding ticket this one, is it? Similar, yeah, yeah. Okay. Take it in and... I can't believe you can get a ticket for your windscreen, but you never know, do you? But there's another issue bothering PC Stanley, the smell of cannabis. Do you use cannabis? Uh, yeah, often. Uh, when was the last time you consumed it? What, uh, it was about half past seven this morning. That was it. I've got to go to work now, right. so you might be able to smell a little bit. Now, yeah. I mean, Is there any in the car now? No. Have you got any on you now? No. no. My tobacco. So none in your pouch. There's a little bit in there, yeah. Right. What I'm going to do is search under Section 23 yeah, of PACE, no Police Criminal Element, that's the search. I can smell cannabis, cannabis as you yeah, said, yeah, from yeah. the car. You've couldn't had some this morning. Yeah, I just want to get out of here. Yeah. Is it just weed? Cannabis yeah, just weed. is proven to slow yeah. reactions yeah. and impair judgment. Right. And driving whilst under the influence of drugs okay. is just as serious as drink driving in the eyes of the law. Right, I'm going to seize that. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay. Okay. Right, that's your pouch back. No other... No, there's no other... No, 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 right. that's it. OK, OK. With the driver admitting the use of cannabis, PC just Stanley has to there, test man. him okay, to no see worries. if he's fit I'll to be driving. What we're proposing to do is what they call a fit test, field impairment test. He's driving a vehicle. He's admitted consumption of cannabis um, at half seven this morning. So we'll go from there. The test will take place in the safety of Chippenham Police Station. The field impairment test is designed to establish how badly the driver is affected by drink or drugs. If he's unable to complete the test satisfactorily, He'll be arrested and blood will be taken to see just how much cannabis is in his system. Because you've made the consumption of cannabis yep. before yep. prior to driving, yep. um, I've got a power of the provisions of road traffic act request, request you take part in what we call a preliminary impairment test. Turn to face me, mate. Right, I'm going I'm to examine the size of your pupils, comparing them with this to this gauge. Left and right three. 
Yeah. And what I need to do, stand right. up straight with your heels and toes together. Yep. When I tell you, tilt your head back slightly and close your eyes. When you think 30 seconds has passed, bring your head forward, open your eyes and say stop. Put your yep. head back slightly, close your eyes. When you think 30 seconds has passed, say, bring your head forward, open your eyes, say stop. If you begin now. Stop. How long was that? Uh, about 35 seconds, I think. Okay. 28. Okay, if you can imagine there's a line. Yep, straight down. Yep. Up so you turn and face that way. Left foot on the line, so imaginary line. And then place your right foot on the line, but in front of your left foot, touching heel to toe. On you go. Okay, the next test is the one leg stand. When I tell you, you must raise your right foot six to eight inches. So I'm gonna ask you to raise your foot and it'll be like that. If you stand right foot out, count 1,001, 1,002. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,020, 1,021. Stop, right. Relax, relax. On what I've seen, okay, I'm gonna arrest you on suspicion of driving a motor vehicle through drink or drugs, okay. okay? I believe you to be impaired. Okay. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you don't mention when questioned, something which led to a line court. Take a seat in there. Do I need to put any bracelets on you? No. All right, mate. Can I have a quick cigarette before I go? No, because you're under arrest now, all right? PC Stanley and his colleague take the driver to Melksham Police right, Station right, for further investigation. Yeah, okay. If found guilty, he could be banned from driving yeah. and fined up to £5,000. We've obviously got an allegation, we need to investigate that. Yes. So we need to carry out tests. So in a minute you'll be invited to provide a sample of breath. Depending upon the result from that will then depend upon where we go further. The doctor will be requested to take a sample of blood. I am going to authorise the officers to strip search you. Yeah. That's because you have been arrested for a drug related offence and I need to make sure that you haven't got anything concealed upon your person. The gent's been booked into custody. We found no other drugs on him. He, he, you know, if he's been involved in a collision and uh, knocked someone over or worst case scenario killed someone. You know, he, there's, it's the same as drink driving. If you if you drink, you run the gauntlet of being stopped and killing someone and going to prison for it. So no, I've got any sympathy for him at all. It's lunchtime on a rainy Birmingham day when the next emergency call comes in to the bike and paramedics. It's come from one of the many student accommodation blocks in the city. Biker paramedic Steve Harris is responding. major universities, the city of Birmingham is home to over 75,000 students, one of the highest student concentrations in the country. The student hall is just under a mile away, and Steve makes it through the lunchtime traffic in just two minutes. Steve finds the patient waiting outside for him. Another ambulance car is already on scene. Steve takes charge. Hello. Hello. What's your name? I'm Leah. L Hello, Leah. I'm Steve. Uh, Here you go. Yeah. How much did you have to drink last night? Um, one glass of wine when I finished work. Yeah. Two glasses of 7.5% wine because mm -hmm. it was cheap. Um, a few shots and mm -hmm. three vodka mixers, which okay. as a student isn't much and I've drunk a lot more. No, that's fine. You sleep okay? I, I remember Junior. being in the club, then I woke up. Right. Where did you wake up? In my room. In your room at home? I wasn't. Yeah. I was undressed and I can't yeah. remember getting myself undressed. Apparently my flatmate had to carry me home. Right. Um, so you were with somebody, you were with, with your flatmates so, yeah. and everything. Okay. Do you remember the fall? No. No? I was outside and they said I was standing outside gate crasher my legs went up and my head just went smack on the floor okay. and the paramedic apparently checked me out there but mm -hmm. I can't remember it which is why I want to get myself checked yeah. out. Okay, right let me just have a quick feel. Right Are there. you aware of... Oh, I can Where feel that, yes there. I can feel that. Yeah. Any other aches and pains? Yeah my knees, both my knees are bruised. Marked? Yep. Yeah. Is the other one the same? Yeah. Similar? It's okay. Uh, obviously, we're out in the street. Uh, there's little I can do to, until the ambulance gets here. I'll just check out where they're coming from, OK? Uh, we'll pop you in. We're, we'll take you down to the hospital and we'll get you checked.
212, just to confirm, ambulance required, be bravo. Steve uh, wants Leah to elements, have her head injury checked over in hospital, but meanwhile, so bits of raining. last night are coming back to her. I woke up this morning with a lump on my head, which is bruised, a little bit of a black eye there, and it's swollen. My hand's swollen, that part of my hand's swollen, both my knees are bruised, one's scratched and it hurts. Um, Apparently, I saw a paramedic last night and they wanted me to go to hospital. My, one of my friends did, but I told them to probably go away in less polite terms. And I want to get myself checked out for concussion. And I think I might have had my drinks back because I didn't drink much compared to students. I think that's bruised or swollen. It's certainly marked up, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, let's see. You make a fist. Yeah. Without causing you any pain or discomfort? Yeah, it's a little bit. Okay. I mean, once we're in the hospital with you, they'll sort of, you know, they can check you top to toe. Mate. Hello there. How are you? She's had a, a, a mixture of drinks, um, which would be my concern, not so much the amount. I don't know whether the, it's the mixture of drinks that have caused the problem or whether it, she has had a drink spiked. When alcohol's in, involved, you very often, they become aggressive, they're not thinking straight, they're not uh, thinking of themselves or consequences. And it's a problem that we get, you know, it's not isolated to students, and I'd hate to give that impression, but uh, this is a problem. The job of a paramedic is not just saving lives. Mark and Steve spend some of their own time getting kids involved with the ambulance service. We will do our best. Today, they're paying a visit to the 16th Sutton Coldfield East Cub Scout Group for some fun and friendly education. First task, getting through the door. But once they've got the bike in, the demonstration is quickly in full flow. When we respond to 999 calls, we're based in the city centre. And on average, myself and Steve can get to jobs within our area um, in two to three minutes. We've got a volunteer. Who do you think we should pick? You can be my patient. So there we go. So we've got 96% oxygen, and you've got a heart rate of 92. This is uh, Sam's ECG, yeah? I don't know whether you can see it very well. All those squiggly lines give us information as to what's going on within the heart. The paramedics visit also gives the cubs a chance to get their own back on the group leader. We now need to get him onto a spinal board. So the person who's got the head is always in charge. So you're going to say, we're going to move on three and you're going to count to three. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. Excellent, well done. Two, three, stop. We were invited along. Um, it's important that we, we take the opportunity to visit schools, cub groups, the younger generation, um, to try and educate them, um, educate them about the service that we provide um, as Westmoreland's Ambulance Service and as healthcare professionals. We could go all the way forward and he won't fall off. Yeah. Should we stand him in the corner while you carry on? They're interested. It would be a shame not to be here. It's a form of education. It's going to bear, uh, stand us in good stead in the future. They're going to take lessons from this and something will, will sink in and it's all to the good. Pop your right foot on there. No, 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 your right foot. That's it. Swing your leg over. Three, there you go. Would you like one? Yeah. Still to come, Wiltshire police have a very rural problem. And Mark's you, uh, called to an old lady nice who's had a nasty place. fall. I think you may have broken your nose. Yeah, we're going to get another man. <laughs> Birmingham, mid-morning. A 999 call is coming in. An 85-year-old woman has had a nasty fall. Mark Hayes is responding. As usual, other 
the road users aren't being cooperative. But he makes it to the scene in just four minutes, and on his bike, is able to ride right up the footpath to the injured lady. Hello there. Oh dear. Hello. All right, we'll have a look, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm 85. Don't worry, we'll make sure you're all right. Okay. My name's Mark, I'm a paramedic. We're going to look after you. Yeah. What's your first name? Beatrice. Beatrice. Be right. Okay, what made you fall? Nothing. I'm walking with this fellow. Just, 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 just tripped there. Tripped okay. Tripped over, yeah. If you didn't go dizzy? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. But of course you don't. Okay, all right. Have you got any pain in your neck or your back at all, Beatrice? Your knee. All right. Are you cold? You're froze. All right. I'll be all right. Okay. You're going to have to go to the hospital, Beatrice. Yeah, yeah, I think you may have broken your nose. Blood yeah. clotting in the elderly is often slower, and bones heal slower. So Mark's keen to get Beatrice to hospital to be Can looked have, after uh, properly. Vehicle, please, uh, elderly female fallen, uh, facial injury, and um, query fractured nose. Yeah, B cap, but uh, if we just bear in mind, please, it's absolutely bitter, and this lady's on the floor. Your nose is a funny shape. I'm assuming it wasn't a funny shape before. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop you to Dudley Road Hospital. Yeah. Mm. We're going to go and get your chest. Hold on, hold on. Try not to rub that nose, just keep it nice and still. Just pop a little dressing on the bridge of your nose. All right, how's your vision? You see okay? Well, yeah, I've only got one eye in any case. You've only got one eye? Yes. I can see too. <laughs> well, any pain in your hip at all? No, I've got no pain. Okay, move yeah. your feet for me. All right. I was just walking with, off with one of my neighbours. Okay. I'm not going to check you out here, it's too cold to start undressing you and having a look. All right, so we're just going to hang on for an ambulance, yeah? It's important that you try not to wipe your nose or blow your nose because you've had a bit of a nosebleed. The moment you start rubbing it, wiping it, removes the clot and you start bleeding again. All right, what do you suffer with normally? Oh, got a book. Hang on. Really... Let me... <laughs> Am I all right to put you in my I little have, black I book? Angina. Angina, anything else? Okay. Doubt. Okay. Beatrice. I haven't Do you want to pop your gloves on? Try and keep your hands warm. I've only got, I've only got one. You've only got one glove? I've got the other one. I don't know where it is. Okay. Uh, your eyes? Yeah. I could go out. No, I don't want you to go in, Beatrice. I want to make sure you're okay. I wouldn't be doing my job properly if we just let you go home. No. It's not bleeding at the moment. No. Yeah. But it's actually started to congeal anyway. My eyes are having a funny shape now. Oh. Well, I'm not going to get another man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll do it quite easily. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kneel behind you so you can rest back. That way, just you can lean back against me now and just rest. Oh, That's it. There you go. Yeah. Just relax. Let your body go floppy. Oh no, it's freezing. Hopefully we won't have to wait too long. I should have come out. I haven't been out for months. Haven't you? No. Have you been unwell? I can't walk very well. Yeah. I get out of breath a lot. Yeah. And I've been coming out, my son's been doing anything. Has he? I'm cold. Oh no. Oh. It's my fingers that are making me feel bad. Yeah, because they're cold. Well, I could go down now. No, no, I want you to go to hospital, Beatrice. You feeling any warmer? Yes, I am. I'm Good. Not even shivering. <laughs> You're not shivering? No. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. No, Get don't. Warm, no, no, don't worry. Let's keep you warm. Um, we've got bitter conditions. It's, it's probably about one degree, but with the wind chill, um, it feels uh, damn sight colder than that. Obviously, uh, Beatrice is on. She's on a cold floor. Um, I mean, it's, it's so vital to keep her warm the best we can. I, you know, that's the only downside of a motorbike. We can get there nice and quickly and we can deliver the service and the treatment that the patient needs. Oh, I'm All right, is that hurting? Yeah. How are you doing? It's cold. 
Uh, this is Beatrice, she's 85 years young. Um, she's fallen face first. Obvious uh, deformity to her nose, not KO'd. Uh, on arrival, GCS 15. Um, no nausea, vomiting, visual disturbances. Right, then we'll get you up off the cold floor. Okay. Somebody gonna help me up? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we'll have you warm in a minute, don't worry. Good day, mate, with the day. She's lucky in the, in the sense that a lot of elderly people, when they tend to fall, um, end up with fractured hips. Uh, she would appear to be quite minor. Um, but nevertheless, she's still on a freezing cold floor. It's absolutely bitter. Um, obviously, it's busy. They get an ambulance to us as quickly as possible. Um, but still, that could mean you've got a five, ten minute wait and, and today we've had a little bit of a wait in the freezing cold. We go to so much uh, violence, alcohol, drugs, people being abusive. Um, I, I could sit and talk to people like Beatrice all day long. For me, that, that's what... Uh, I've made more of a difference there, trying to keep her warm, chatting, and she's, you know, to me that's a bread and butter job, it's, that's, that's what it's about. Wiltshire in Swindon, Sergeant Barry Card and PC Gavin Brewster have an unusual job today. Off-road patrol. These are our, um, our off-road bike, uh, BMW F650. Uh, completely different beast to the to the on-road bike. These are a single-cylinder 650cc off-road bike with uh, with specially designed off-road tyres. Well, there's a there's a problem with in Swindon, as in most towns, I guess. Usually, teenagers. Uh, ride around housing estates on motorcycles, some of which are legitimate, legitimately theirs, although they're not riding legitimately because they haven't got crash helmets on, they're not insured, no license, etc. And some of which are stolen. And before we got the off-road bikes, we um, we had no way really of, of, of keeping with them or, or, or catching them. We're still going to have to respond to any collisions that come in Swindon and effectively do our on-road role. But if we get any antisocial uh, riding around any estates or if there's anything that's uh, sort of linked to, to off-road, then we'll go and take a look. The bikes are a joint venture between police and Swindon Borough Council. They're owned by the council, but operated by the police. They were brought in to tackle antisocial behaviour and dangerous use of scooters and mini-motos. The off-road bikers are specially trained to ride not only in fields and forests, but also around housing estates, up and down stairs, and down narrow alleyways. There's nowhere to hide for lawbreakers in Swindon. The bikes have been so successful that arrests for antisocial behaviour have dramatically reduced since their introduction. Today's call is not to antisocial behaviour, it's to a very different type of off-road problem. A flock of sheep have got loose, but blocking a road on the outskirts of Swindon. Officers Card and Brewster are ideally positioned to help out. They just want the traffic stop this end, he said. Where are they now? They're coming down. What we've got here is some, is some sheep on the road. Um, I'm told by that member of the public that's just left that there's a farmer up there going to try and usher the sheep down. And Gavin's gone up the other end to stop the traffic at that end. We'll stop the traffic at this end. And hopefully the farmer will be able to bring all of his flock down and stick them in the field. It's not the usual call for off-road bikers, but as traffic officers, keeping the highways and byways of Wiltshire flowing freely is top priority. Can you cover that gap? The gap, I don't want them going down there. We've got to get them into there. If you can stand, they're coming down, you see. It's not what PC Brewster was expecting to find on today's patrol. Yeah, that's a bit more unusual, that one. Uh, sheep in the road, uh, not as unusual as it probably would be uh, in a big city, but uh, yeah, and uh, 
stay in this way, yeah, we don't often get it, but uh, there we are. Uh, I didn't have any lasso on me today, unfortunately, um, but uh, fortunately we were able to get them in anyway. Birmingham, early morning rush hour, and a 999 call is coming in. We have reports of uh, RTC uh, just outside the city. It's a little bit of a run, but uh, it's uh, believed to be a car versus a motorcycle. Accidents involving fellow bikers always hit Mark and Steve hardest. The accident site is seven miles away. En route, Steve gets an update that the Helimed helicopter is on its way too. It sounds serious. Seven minutes after leaving the city centre, he's on scene, the first paramedic to reach the accident. Hello there. Yeah, okay. Right. Gentleman sitting down there. You're all right, mate. Hello, sir. Hello, there. Right. Hello, sir. I'm Steve. Hello, sir. Oh, do you know? Neil. Hello, Neil. How are you doing? I'm all right. Any specific aches and pains? Um, Anything? No, I mean, I, 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 felt, I, mean, I can feel my legs. I'm mean, yeah. I've taken a bit of a jar. I'm in risk of a bit of a jar, but other than that, I am, I'm all right. <coughs> you, you feel like that? It's clear that the helicopter won't be needed. Today, this motorcyclist, Neil, has had a lucky escape after colliding with a van. Although he seems unhurt, Steve checks Neil over for any obvious spinal or internal injuries. Just have a feel of your head and neck. Where I'm touching, tell me if you have any tenderness, no. if it's sore at all. No, nothing at all. Nothing down there? No. Excellent. Drop your chin to your chest and backwards, and that doesn't cause you any discomfort, no pulling, no pins no. and needles tingling no. at all. Okay? Shrug your shoulders and move those, yeah. Yeah, Big deep breath for me. And out. Shall we pop you in the ambulance, yeah. sir? Obviously on your way into work. Yeah, I drive yeah. every day, to be honest. In the ambulance, Steve Have can give Neil some final advice. Just to make you aware, you may well discover things as the day goes on yeah. and possibly tomorrow morning once you've been in bed for a night yeah. uh, that would be normal and expected you know yeah. I mean you have hit the deck yeah. and say at the moment adrenaline's still going and yeah. you know you're thinking oh I'm all right you know but I uh, say a few hours time you might think oh yeah, I've okay. got a twinge here and I've got a twinge there just stay where you are until it's all done okay. and uh, then we'll let you go all right okay, all the best sir. Yeah. okay that's fine but walking away without a scratch from his accident isn't the only unusual thing about this biker. His ride is quite remarkable too. Yeah. Hey. Well, you get for having two wheels on the front, isn't it? Well, this is it's the wrong it's, setup, isn't it's it? It's unnatural. It's very unnatural. I've never ridden this style of bike. I've seen them around, uh, two front wheels and one back wheel. They're said to be more stable. And even now, after the accident, the bike is still on its wheels, stood up. We are vulnerable on motorcycles, regardless of training experience or whatever else, we are more vulnerable. Um, and when you get a call in that if there's a motorcycle involved, motorcycle car, uh, it does make the adrenaline flow a little bit. You are thinking, well, here's a, a fellow biker. It just makes you a, a little bit more aware, and probably for the rest of the day now, I'll just be thinking, well, you know, the, the roads are, there, there was a bit of a frost last night, so the roads are damp, so it just helped slow me down a little bit. Still to come, the paramedics get some well-earned time off. Whatever I'm doing, if it's out in the country, I, I don't think you can get any, any better uh, way of uh, stress relief than that. <laughs> Out 
inside Birmingham. Mark and Steve are having a well-earned break in the countryside. Today, we've decided to have a go at quad biking. On your days off, I think it's really important to, to try and unwind. City centre life, responding on blue lights, it's, it, it, it is stressful. It does tell on you. And, uh, and I, whatever I'm doing, if it's out in the country, I, I don't think you can get any, any better uh, way of uh, stress relief than that. Away from the medical emergencies of the city centre, Mark and Steve have a rare chance to reflect on the job and each other. Over ten years so we've been together. It's over ten years now. Uh, yeah, on the bike. In a working relationship. Yeah. I've joined the motorcycle unit first, and then Mark came in afterwards. Yeah, we felt sorry for him. Yeah. You know, he, he, he kept standing at the door crying, so we let him in in the end. Yeah. The thing is, we spend more time with each other than we do with our own families. So you know, you, you do build a bond, and. Um, no, and it's good. I don't think there's many people that have the same sort of bond. I suppose after a bit you start to get on each other's nerves, but because we enjoy our job so much on the bikes, yeah. I think that helps. So do I, but he does get on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I think spending the time together, we do learn from each other. You know, I'm wise and I've got the... <laughs> Here we go. Little <laughs> <laughs> stuff. <laughs> right, you know, I'm, I'm wiser. Uh, I've got a bit more maturity. Only a little bit, but um, I, I like to impart my knowledge to Mark and I'm sure he takes that on board. But equally, uh, I learn from Mark. Uh, you know, not a lot, but <laughs> I do learn. Oh, my Jesus. <laughs> and it seems Mark could learn a thing or two about quad biking as well. Body weight this way. Get my body weight that way. Yeah, keep body weight over this way. Okay, keep yeah. coming this way. Okay. Keep your left, left wheel here where it's dry. Yeah. So literally come straight forward. And don't worry about those brambles because they're just brambles. There's okay. nothing there. Ready? We've come up a, a bit of a steep, slippery hill. Um, instructor first, Steve second, Tal and Charlie here. And as I've got to the top, I've veered off to the left and I'm stuck on the side of this hill with a little pond at the bottom. And uh, I thought I was going to turn from flying there into flipper. But there are serious things on Steve's mind. I haven't made any decision yet. I don't know when I'm going to retire. I'm 60 this year. So, uh, you know, I've still got a few years left in me. Whether I choose to do them at work or outside, I don't know, but I'd hope to last a few more years yet. The woman stabbed in Birmingham did have a collapsed lung as Mark suspected and was kept in hospital for a week. Malcolm was found to have broken his sternum and was off work for a month. Tests showed the young student's drink had not been spiked, but she had broken her wrist and spent six weeks in plaster. Beatrice had not broken her nose, but did have bad bruising and was left with two black eyes. And the motorcyclist escaped his ordeal with just minor cuts and bruises. Back at the biker's den, Mark and Steve have received a special delivery from the Cubs. Well, we've had this dropped off. They've all done individual thank yous. Dear Mark and Steve, thank you. Thank you very much for coming to Cubs. I really enjoyed sitting on the bike and learning about the bikes. That's from Liam's, and I like Liam's picture. Oh, dear Mark and Steve, Thank you, I enjoyed sitting on the bike, but my favourite part was talking to Mark. Thank you very much from Aidan. It doesn't say that at all. <laughs>